9.6 is on circles in the Pythagorean theorem. And so this is just an application of some of the things that we learned in this unit, but also drawing from some of the items we learned, like back in chapter 6, where we focused on circles, and earlier this year, when we were talking about definitions and uh, characteristics of circles, probably back in chapter 1, 2, and 3, we talked a little bit about circles there too. But first, let's just review right here, the tangent conjecture and the angles inscribed in a semicircle conjecture. And hopefully you can remember these. You can always refer back to your notes in chapter 6 where we talked about circles. But remember the tangent conjecture that a tangent is a line down here. Here's our tangent. It's a line that crosses a circle exactly one time at what we call the point of tangency. And we know that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to, so perpendicular, uh oh, here we go, come on now, perpendicular to the radius, perpendicular radius, and I'll just put in parentheses, drawn to the point of tangency. I talked about point of tangency, meaning that point where it crosses the circle. One of the other conjectures that was about circles is angles inscribed in a semicircle. We're an angle inscribed in a semicircle. Any inscribed angle, remember, was half of the arc that it intercepts. So a semicircle being 180 degrees, that would make the angle inscribed in a semicircle half of 180 degrees, which is 90 degrees. So to complete the conjecture, Let's say angles inscribed in a semicircle are right angles. All right, so using these two conjectures, let's mark in all of our right angles in the diagram down here. Well, I know that my radius is perpendicular to the tangent line, so I know this is a right angle here, and I know this is a right angle on the other side. And then the other thing was, if this is a diameter right here, then I know that this entire arc from here all the way to here, so let's call this A and let's call this B. So the arc from A to B on this side and on the other side is 180 degrees. So this inscribed angle down here must be half of that or 90 degrees. So that is an angle inscribed in a semicircle. So that is 90 degrees right there. So we've got those three 90 degree angles and Whenever we're dealing with 90 degree angles, we oftentimes will make right triangles. So you can see we have a right triangle right here, and when we have a right triangle, we can start to use the Pythagorean theorem in a number of problems related to it. All right, so let's look at the examples down here. First example is actually going to draw from our work on special right triangles earlier in the unit here. So it says TA is tangent to the circle. N at A, so we know that that must be a 90 degree angle then because the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to that point. Since we have the 30 degree angle here, what's the angle that's left here? That's right, 60 degrees. Now it says that the length of TA is 12 times the square root of 3. It's kind of a funny number, but Hopefully that clues you in a little bit because we talked about the 30-60-90 rule. It says the short leg, the one across from the 30 degree angle is x, and then the longer leg is x times square root of 3, and then the hypotenuse is 2x. So based on what we know here, we know that the x part right here is 12, and remember the x is the short leg, so the radius here is 12 centimeters. I am being asked to find the area of the shaded region and find the area of a circle or a part of a circle. I'm going to need to know the radius. I now know the radius is 12 centimeters. Now to find the area of this shaded region here, remember from our work back in chapter 6, this is what we call a sector of a circle. Actually, back from chapter 8, we were talking about that as the part of the area, like a slice of a circle. So this sector, and 
the area of that sector is based on how many degrees are on the arc that goes from A all the way to C along the outside of the circle, long way around. Well, if we've got a 60 degree angle in the middle here, that must mean that this arc is 360 minus 60, which of course is 300 degrees. So this arc measure right here is 300 degrees. All right, now we have all of the information we need in order to find the area of a sector. So recall the area of a sector, so sector area is equal to the arc measure out of 360, in other words, the fraction of the circle we're looking at, times pi r squared. So the fraction of the area of the whole circle. So arc measure out of 360 times pi r squared. We now know our arc measure is 300 degrees, so 300 out of 360 times pi times r squared, and we know our radius is 12, so 12 squared. 300 360 reduces to 5 6 12 squared is 144, so I'll put that next, and then I'll put pi at the end. And then 5 6 of 144, so if I multiply those two numbers together, I get a grand total of 120 pi square centimeters for that area. And that is approximately equal to, even if we're rounding the tenth place, it rounds up to the next whole number, so 377 square centimeters. So that would be the area of that shaded region. So you can see that we used some of our work in this unit from right triangles, but also some of our work from chapter 8 and back from chapter 6 with a couple of the conjectures here. So we're having to now draw from our knowledge bank from the entire year to solve some of these problems. All right, number two. AB is 6 centimeters and BC is 8 centimeters. Find the area of the circle. All right, well, the area of the circle based on the radius. So I guess if I could figure out what the radius was, then I'd be able to find the area. Let's see if we can figure out what that radius is. Well, let's draw in here first. We have 6 centimeters on AB. BC is 8. Okay, well, hopefully you're seeing the right triangle right here, where AC is the diameter, but also the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So let's start off with a little bit of Pythagorean theorem work to get, let's call this C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm just going to go right to 6 squared then plus 8 squared is equal to C squared. So 36 plus 64 is equal to C squared. 100 is equal to c squared. So c is the square root of 100, which we know is 10. And so 10 centimeters. Now, c is the diameter of our circle. In order to get the area of our circle, we need the radius. So what is the radius? Well, if the diameter is 10, hopefully you know the radius would be 5 centimeters. So now let's use that for the second part of our problem. The area of our circle is equal to pi r squared. Now we know that the radius is 5, so pi times 5 squared, which of course would be 25 pi square centimeters, and that's approximately equal to 78.5 square centimeters. So as you do the problems in this section, Again, think about what we've learned in this unit, but don't forget about the stuff that we've learned in previous units because we're going to need to draw upon that knowledge as well.